Super. So hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to do a little intro of who I am and all that jazz. And then from there, we are going to go to talking about motivating the man training dog. So those of you who haven't met me or haven't heard of me, my name is Catherine Jones. Um, I run training canines here in North Wales. Um, I'm one of the man training global head instructors. I'm one of the actual international instructors. I've worked um, now managed to work over in the USA um, and we'll be back there next year for some more instructor courses. I've been a man training global head instructor for the past three and a half years. Um, sorry, I've been instructed for three and a half years, um, but I've been a head instructor for two and a half. Um, I've been training my man training dogs for just over four years. Um, I started with my German Shepherds, who was quite a low motivation dog. Um, he's a big white German Shepherd called Titan, and he is super low motivation. He cannot be bothered. So he is kind of one of my reasons for writing this webinar and then there's a couple of the dogs that I'm thinking about when I wrote it. Um, I now trail with my Springer Spaniel mainly who's um, working with levels within man training as a sport and then I've just got myself a little Bavarian mountain hound puppy um, who's only just over six months now and he started his man training journey and he's super sweet and it's been absolutely fabulous working with a hound. I'm just going to clarify to you guys now that this is um, talking about my opinions, my knowledge and my experience. Um, and this is about sports man trailing dogs. I have no experience in operational man trailing dogs and I am unaware of if any of my information could be applicable to that. If you do have operational man trailing dogs um, or want to go down that route, my information may not be correct what I'm talking about is sportsman trailing dogs. I have a background in operational security dogs and detection dogs. That's how I first started training with dogs um, alongside the behavior degree. Um, that's why I'm an NCIPDU instructor, but my man training knowledge is all based on the sport that is man trailing. Um, I'm also a member of the Canine Feline Behavior Association and I work um, briefly a little bit at the moment doing behavior cases and I specialize in aggression but I used to do that full time I'm now taking it to doing man training full time so let's talk about motivating the man trailing dog when we talk about motivation what are we talking about what is motivation motivation is a reason or reasons for acting behavior in a particular way effective training and find is finding the right motivation when we talk about this motivation we're talking about getting the dog to go from A to B. We're talking about that dog um, wanting to do the behavior and wanting to, um, uh, basically wanting to act with the game, don't they? We were talking about them wanting to do it. Um, bear with my notes a little bit, guys. <laughs> um, a big piece of paper going on here. Um, it's an, motivation is the reason which humans and animals um, initiate, continue and terminate a behavior at a given time. They, it's a reason for acting, it's a reason for doing things, it's a reason for, you know, anything. It's a motivation for life. You're motivated to go to work for money. You're motivated to help people for that good feeling or financial or because there's a feeling of guilt. There's, there's always a reason why people do things and there's always a reason why dogs do things. It isn't a time where dog just does something randomly there has to be the right motivation in order to do it um really when we're talking about motivation we're talking about value perception as well it's our perception of what that dog finds valuable um do they find playing with us more valuable over food do they find food more valuable over sniffing and then eventually the value becomes I value man trailing over other things. Any of you that have man trailed have seen dogs ignore things that they might normally interact with um, and ignore things that they might normally react with. Um, we've often seen reactive dogs that would normally react to things like dogs on a walk or a person being there completely blank those things because they're so focused on the task of man trailing and the reinforcement and the motivation that they have for man trailing. Um, value perception always comes down to what our um, reception value is. You know, some people go, oh, my dog loves food. He's really food motivated. They come man trolling and dog goes, you need to work for kibble. You hand them sausage, they go, no. You hand them wet cat food and they're all their Christmases are coming once. It's amazing. Um, so you can find that um, dogs will pick value um, that's different to what we perceive as a certain amount of value. It, it can be different to them. Um, I'm also talking is it motivation or reinforcement. Um, it, we're really talking about what we're reinforcing the dog to do. Uh, for dogs to be motivated to do something, there are 
certain things that they'll just do because there's that's a reinforcement of life um but we're reinforcing that we're saying to them it's amazing um and the way to get more of this amazing thing is to continue doing that behavior it's to continue um wanting to do the thing in this case is continue finding the person hidden in the bush <laughs> um with finding the reason to go and find somebody um so when we talk about reinforcers we talk about primary reinforcing secondary reinforcers primary reinforcers are survival and direct reward behavior so when we say survival it's food water sex um and then with link with this is obviously the predatory behavior in order to do that so when we're talking about that survival if dog doesn't hunt prey and kill it it's not going to survive um, and then we're kind of saying, you know, can you actually call a primary reinforcement or reinforcements drive? How much drive or reinforcement does the dog have for living? Um, or in our case, drive for what we're doing. Um, and the primary reinforcement is a direct reward. It has a direct action. So if the dog kills something, they can eat it. If the dog sits, they get an immediate bit of food. There is a direct reward. Um, it's immediate and it's consistent. Whereas secondary reinforcers or conditioned reinforcers are by association. We've all seen Pavlov's dog. Um, and that's, you know, hear the bell, reinforcer. It's a conditioned response. Um, we can create conditioned reinforcers by association. Um, and one of these is the intensity trail. So when we talk about man training as a sport, I'm a man training global instructor. And we have our method, it was previously man training UK, but we are now man training global because we've gone global. Um, the intensity trail is a trail we do after every trail. So no matter how long the main trail is, whether it's long, short or otherwise, or aged or low distraction, we always do intensity trail. This could be classified as a secondary reinforcer where the dog goes, oh, I found a person in the bush, brilliant, got my reward. And then they get excited again. The person who's trail running for them gets more excited and runs off. The dog can go, oh my goodness, I'm gonna get reward. They start to anticipate that reward. Lots of dogs when I come in, to the trail layer, get the reward, and then go right when you're hiding, when you're hiding. That could be a secondary reinforcer. It's the pairing with the primary reinforcer and the primary association, which is the food, um, that makes that fun. It's the same with toys. Toys on their own make no sense to dogs. It is a thing on a floor. They're more likely going to chew it. Playing with us is built out of reinforcement for that thing. We reinforce that if you do this thing, if you bring me that, that random bit of rubber on a string that means nothing to you i will interact with you it's it's the way to get our attention um and it's reinforced by our attention um so you have to think about these things and what your dogs um enjoy in order to get your attention what we're talking about tonight is well i may go a lot of tangents we're talking about motivating our man training dogs and we need to look at what primary reinforces them is it food or is it the, op the want to hunt, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then alongside that is what else have we associated that with? When you get to the food, do you get a fuss behind the ear? When you get to food, do you get a play? When you get out of the car, does that harness mean you're gonna get a play? Those reinforcements that in the long term create a motivation for the game. Um, so we can also talk a little bit about re breed reinforcement. Um, we domesticated the dog. 20,000 years ago in ancient North Europe by the ancient North Eurasians in Siberia, apparently. Um, and these are later dispersed eastward America, westwards and Eurasia. And it, the dogs, we, when we originally just came, were hunting partners. We got them to be more efficient at what we do. Um, man training taps into that kind of primalness and it also taps into that knowledge of these dogs were bred to do this thing. Um, so therefore they're going to keep doing it. Um, we've bred them for over thousands and thousands of years to do it. So we're looking at different breeds when we're man trailing that can affect the motivation and what reinforcers we might choose for them. It doesn't mean that every breed is going to be the same, but it means that lots of breeds are going to be prepositioned to certain reinforcers and certain primary reinforcers over others. A collie per se might be more interested in herding a dog and eating. You can often retreat, but the movement is more exciting to them and, and builds up more reinforcement for them whereas with a german shepherd or like a like a dog that's bred for white sports um they might be more reinforced by grabbing something rather than chasing it um or they might be more reinforced by gripping and holding and keeping it in their mouth than um running after it 
it's really then becomes a breed dependent behavior which we can then use for our motivation we can use them how we want to um it's great yeah, so talking about breeding individuals um genetics and reinforcement and drives so when we talk about the breed we can say our labrador is pre-positioned to very very handler centric and also work quite a bit of distance what you tend to find is with the labrador if you're pushing it all the time and you're up its bum and really annoying it in terms of being too on top of it they would tend to go yes yes i love you but i'm used to working away from you i don't need you to be here um and then we need to look at them within the breed and then look at them as an individual we've all had dogs me included i have always had high drive german shepherds until i got my white german shepherd titan who is a I call him the Bichon Frise because he's got super low drive for a German Shepherd, but he's of pet stock and he was bred to be a pet companion. He was never going to be a high drive Malinois or Czech working line German Shepherd. It was never going to happen, but he has just very low drive, even for a low drive dog. Just want to check there's nothing in the chat, guys. Um, nope, guys, we're all good. Um, so we need to look at them as individuals and then look at them and what those drives bring. When you look at your own dog that you're man trailing with, no matter the, the dog, think about what it was bred to do. If you have a herding dog, more than likely movement's gonna be a big thing for that dog. And they might not be a massive player, but they might be quick on the movement and want to chase something. If you've got a dog that's used to carrying like a Labrador, you find that they don't wanna play tuggy, but they wanna carry something. Or they might be quite food motivated. Oh, I spend a lot of time speaking to people about the breeds they have. It's really common I've pet owners to get a dog based on looks rather than based on what they're bred for. Um, I have just say, got my Bavarian Mountain Hound puppy. He, you know, they are bred for using their nose. Um, and I got him for man trailing. A lot of search and rescue in Europe are now using them and they're exceptionally good. They're a hound, they've got the long ears and all to take scent to their nose. They're bred to use their nose. My Springer Spaniel is also bred to use his nose, but he's not bred to use his nose in the same way. He's bred to go and hunt for a scent and find a bird somewhere in a field where there's no trail, whereas the hounds are bred to find a trail and follow a trail. It's the same but different. Um, whereas, you know, livestock guardian dogs aren't bred to use their nose consistently. They're bred to be very visual um, and then very sensitive to what's going on with other animals. So they can be very focused on what's going on in other places rather than what is um, gaining their attention then all the time. You know, they're very sight driven and the person goes, they go, well, they're out of sight. What's the problem? Um, so when you come into motivating that dog, you need to look at the breed and then you look at it as an individual. For me, um, it's having a low drive German Shepherd even though he's low drive, he still likes to grab. He still likes to jump and grip things. So we do lots of play with him. He likes that. He's not as vigorous as my Malinois German Shepherd, who wants to take your arm off and the toy out your arm as he goes. Um, he's not. He's not like that. But he still wants to have those breed things, just in a much smaller version or a much less low drive version or in this case, low motivation, low reinforcement. When it comes down to it, these words mean the same but different. They're very similar and it's our interpretation of what they are. Oh God. It's high versus low drive. <laughs> drive is a willingness and vigor, enthusiasm to gain in a certain behavior. This dog's awesome. This is a German Shepherd and he's quite a high drive German Shepherd, um, but he's got a lovely off switch. But this is a brilliant photo of a dog that's been really excited on man trailing. He's been really wound up and he's going, give me my reward now bitches um which is hilarious and i just thought it's a really good photo <laughs> um he is a class dog i'm just gonna check there's no comments guys um super duper what about mixed breeds oh that's actually a really good question before we go any further um mixed breeds so you need to have a look at what those breeds were bred to do um if you're going to look at them as a whole you need to look at all the parts of them um and then what which is dominant so we have i have a really good dog that trails me occasionally that's a point across foxhound and even though both those dogs bred to use their nose in most degree they trail and work very very differently so what you will find is that dog um will, well, it's really really on scent and the scent hasn't moved very far it's a hound puts the nose down works very low to the ground very very close to the scent um is on it when the scent's gone quite a bit airborne and, and there's maybe a bit of age on the trail or the wind's blowing it it's pointer it will go very very checking the air head air head quite high um may even give a lot of flicks left and right and may even try to attempt to go visual at the end and go okay i know i'm in a scent pool so where is the person 
you have to look at the breeds that are in it and then you have to look at how those breeds are affecting its day-to-day -day trailing and its day-to-day -day life um, and see which either comes out more in the trail or at the end. This dog's very pointer um, and very food driven. So what happens, the dog gets the end and goes, hey, feed me. If it was very hound driven, it'd probably go, yep, run off, I need to find you again. I want the sniff, I want the sniff. It would like the reward, but it's probably more interested in the hunt. Um, so high versus low drive dogs. Um, what is a drive? As I put there, it's a willingness to dig it or enthusiasm to engage in certain behavior. We have drives to do things. We have drives to, to learn, which is why you're here. We have drives to, um, oh, my brain just turned off then. <laughs> drives to learn. We have drives to survive. We have sex drive. We have drives companionship and dogs have similar drives that we can interpret. We're not, we can't in a dog's head. We can't tell what they're thinking, but we can interpret their behavior. Prey is kind of the one we all hear. It's like, it's prey drive. It's got loads of prey drive. And that means it's got to kill stuff. Prey is that um, hunt, find, chase, kill business. Um, eat. I'll say it better than that, actually. It's desire to find, which is using scent, chase, kill, and eat. It's that's prey drive. It doesn't mean it's going on a killing spree. It means that it's going through biological urges in order to survive. This is then obviously linked into play drive. Play is incomplete um, survival behavior. It's where a dog goes, oh, I'm gonna play and practice these things, but I'm not gonna do the whole life's ending. If I don't eat, that's the world gone. <laughs> like I'm not gonna survive. So play is kind of, we see play a lot in dogs because they don't have to go through the prey drive anymore. But those genetics haven't disappeared in the last 10,000 years. They're still there and we still harness them. Another drive we can talk about is defense. Um, this comes back to my security background where a dog will do something in order to defend itself. Now this isn't necessarily a man trailing thing, but you will see it pop up in man trailing um, because the dog will be worried about something and potentially shift itself backwards and you know protect itself because it's something going on. That is something to do with the game and you need to reinforce the you know prey and play. And we also have investigation, which could be linked to scent drive, or you can give it as many names as you want. It's motivation to do something. Um, and it's it's dog's personality and how they want to put their energy. Where do they want to place their energy when they're doing things? And you've got to look at your dog as an individual with that and go, what does my dog actually enjoy doing on a walk? Is it looking at me and engaging with me? Am I reinforcing? Is it because I've got food in my pocket or is it because they want my attention? Is it a spaniel that's gone five fields over and it's looking in a bush? It's It can be many different things. Um, and that is what's individual to that dog. And you've got to kind of look at it and go, okay, so my dog's really into sniffing. How can I bring that into motivating my dog in man trailing? Well, man trailing is all about sniffing. What do they like getting at the end? They like finding something. So we're going to give them a toy to play with or a toy to find. Um, we're going to give them food from the person lots of things we'll talk a little bit more about the types of rewards you can use for motivating a dog um and talk a little bit about prey and play like so prey is that with that eat kill bit on the end play is without it um and play is so important for your bond with your dog and it's really important i think if you can get your dog to play then do even if it's in a way that you don't necessarily enjoy like it's a bit of a tuggy game or it's hiding stuff on the house just because you don't enjoy it doesn't mean your dog doesn't and for you to put your own personal beliefs or personal effort like if you're saying well i want a dog to do xyz i want my dog to have high reinforcement and motivation for something but i don't put any effort into the foundations of it you're not going to get very far with it um it's going to cause issues longer term because the dog goes well you're not engaging with me so why i'd engage with you um to do one thing to watch about as well is when we talk about high and low drive it's a term that we put there is no no dog has more or less big of a life but dogs have more where they want to put energy so i call titan a low drive dog he doesn't have a lot of drive for working and focusing on people because he just can't be bothered but he has high drive for looking for things and he has high drive sociality with the dog so he's a very very social dog and he thrives on being in that environment and that's he will seek out spending time with dogs as much as he will seek out spending time with me but he doesn't enjoy training with me um because he doesn't he's like why well, what's the effort for all the fuss like i just like the fuss please that's his personal thing um one thing i would look for in the high versus low 
is that kind of tip into over arousal. When we have dogs that are very keen on their like, I must hunt, break, kill, I must play, 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 is you can get over arousal, which turns into other breed behaviors where a dog may nip because they're so fun, fun, fun. They want fun, 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 fun. They're not getting it immediately. They'll turn around and get you to respond through a nip and things like that. So it's always something to watch with what we class as higher drive dogs that they're not using their behavior inappropriately. Just pause for breath there a little bit. Sorry, guys. I know I speak quite quickly, so I do apologize. Um, it's not always fun for everybody. Super. Super duper. Play. We talked a little bit about play. Um, obviously, breed traits. That's my Springer Spaniel captain. Um, when we talk about different breed traits, we're talking about, obviously, again, what they're bred to do. Um, and I think it's important that you kind of think about what your dog is bred to do. It's, it's just daft for somebody to have a dog if they don't think about what's bred to do. Um, I asked someone the other day what their dog was bred to do, and they couldn't tell me <laughs> what it was bred to do. <laughs> um, and I went, so how how do you understand your dog? And they 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 were having loads of issues with engagement and one of the issues was they didn't understand their dog um which is part of the problem um when we talk about play um we talk about bond building at the same time we're talking about having a game of tuggy with our dog um having a game of hide and seek running around rough housing whatever you want something that involves you interacting with that dog in some way is usually a play thing it's individual to that dog so that spring of spaniel's captain my main boy i actually have his mum because i bred him and his absolute life goal is attention off me he loves attention off me he, he's i've been there since day he was born he's very me centric his mum my spaniel i got her eight weeks from a fantastic friend of mine who's a good breeder and she's very very intelligent very me centric but nowhere near as him she will go for a scent over me to scent strong enough, whereas he won't. He's like, I don't give a shit, I need you, I need you. Which makes training really easy. What I found my hound puppy, I didn't get my hound puppy till he was 16 weeks. I have missed out on some of the real good bonding stuff with him. He's very centric on me, but no one is the same thing that Captain was or my German Shepherds were at that age. He's very much give or take, but that's also a hound thing. Um, then, you know, you, you're part of their life more than you're part, they're part of your life. Um, and you have to spend a long time working on that bond because they have other priorities in life. You know, he's my first hand, I'm gonna learn a hell of a lot of him, but I knew what I was getting into. When we talk about play as well, it's the handler element. So we can be quite overbearing with things like that. If we're gonna motivate our dog to have fun, we need to have a game that they find fun. And dragging your dog around by its teeth on a toy is often a little bit too much. Um, I've seen people get the dogs and play really rough and they're like, yeah, dog is loving it. The dog's like, oh, I really want the reward, but I do not want you to touch me. Um, just because you're playing with them doesn't mean they want you on them. A lot of times I'll see people playing with a toy like this and then they'll lean over the dog and the dog goes, whoa, no, thank you. That's quite upsetting. I don't want to be here. And they'll have a little panic and they'll move back. Um, what we need to do is make sure that the dogs feel comfortable with how we play and that we don't overbear on them, that we don't um, get up on their face and we don't make it not fun it doesn't need to be serious playing with toys um over arousal again we come back to this i work with a lot of what you can go quote unquote high drive dogs these are dogs with very strong genetic traits to do certain things which they find motivating so they want to grab things because that is something that makes them feel good and they find it motivating so they're going to keep doing the behavior that precursors it which is man trailing they're going to keep trailing to find somebody to get the toy at the end um, the best example usually for this is like a Malinois. Malinois gets there, finds a person, gets the food, then goes, right, give me my toy. They want to grip on something. They want to fulfill their breed trait behavior. And then if there isn't a toy, they're going to take it out on your coat potentially, or they're going to take it out on the pots. And if there's a toy, they can have a tuggy game and they have it feel better. They're releasing dolphins and the body goes, oh, we've done what we're bred to do. Find somebody, bite a bad man, life's good. That Malinois didn't know it was born to do that, but its genetics prepositions it to do those behaviors. Not saying all do that. I've had a very low drive Malinois that was a complete pansy. And you can look at her and go, that's Malinois, but she had a monocock spaniel. Um, toy choice. The toy choice is not up to you. It's up to your dog. Um, my dogs will pretty much play with most things. They like a ball on a rope, which is great for me because I like ball on the rope. Um, fluffy toys don't really get their attention. 
um, and they tend to just want to destroy it. They want to go into that kind of hunt killy bit rather than like playing tuggy with me with, with fluffy toys. Um, some dogs just like a ball on its own. I'm not particularly a fan of a ball on its own because you can't play, you can't interact with them. You're just a ball dispenser. So be careful of that one. Um, but finding the right toy for your dog is important having different textures and also think about the size the amount of people that i see with the ball it's too big for the little dog is unbelievable like i have really big toys in my big my gym chips are quite big so they'll have balls that are like that big great my springer is not interested in that it's too big for him um he's not going to play with a toy that big but i have some little grenade toys that he loves because he can get his girlfriend in them um and he likes it he loves a game of tuggy as my springer but i've spent a long time cultivating that behavior um so it's you know toy choice is really important and also thinking about the size of that toy and what's on it so this is a tug enough toy i quite like tug enough um ball on the rope the ball has a lot of bits and bobs texture wise the dogs like fluffy bit for them to rip bits and bobs off this is really fun toy for my dogs but they don't think about playing tug with me with it they all they want to do is rip the fluff off it because they want to kill it um because that's what my spaniels like to do. My shepherds, not so much, but they tend to just crush the tennis ball on these things. Um, so a ball on the rope, which has gone AWOL at my office, I assume I probably has got it, um, is more preferred for them. And it's great for me because I can give it a throw, which is always good fun. Um, you also need to think about how you're playing with it. So we talk about rough and overbearing. Are you pulling the toy of the dog all the time and you're being over the top? Are you letting them win it? Are you letting them party with it? So when we talk about party, we're talking about telling that dog it is awesome. Can they parade back with that toy? Are you telling them that they've just had the best thing in the world? They've found their hidden person. They've got the toy off them. And now the world is complete. Mum's happy. The trail layer's happy. The dog's happy. We found the toy. We've killed it. Let's carry it back to the den. What's going through that dog's mind, do you think? And you need to think about that. Some dogs want to carry a toy back and they're like, amazing some dogs don't want the has to carry about they want you to have it but they don't want just anyone to have it they want you to have it motivating that dog is on the play side is again individual i'm going to repeat that ten thousand times individual and you should be building play drive and with toys away from man trailing it's not just oh yeah i've never introduced a toy in my life let's put it end of a trail that dog isn't going to go hey unless potentially a malinois or something um or a spaniel it's it's going to go I've never seen this. What context is this? What are you on about? Right. Uh, okay. I'll interact with it. Um, and I just find that they don't pick it up very well. Super duper. Oh, there was a question. Crap. Uh, da -da 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 -da. uh so Catherine Hunt has put, um, you mentioned Malinois taking out wanted to play frustration on biting your coat. I once forgot to bring my dog to with me. So at the end of the trail, I took off running because border collie movement is super fun. So she could chase me and let me jump in my arms and bend over back. She's lucky it thought it was still a lot of fun. Yeah. You got you knew what you were looking for with your breed and you went, I've got a chasey dog, so I'm gonna run. Fantastic, but wouldn't recommend that with Malinois guys. Would not recommend it. Um she says having Malinois that would definitely nip her ass. Um breed traits. You've clearly gone, my dog's a colleague likes chasing, haven't got something to tell game to play with, so I'm going to be part of the fun. There's nothing that, say, there's, that says in the rule book that you can't be part of the fun. Like, nothing that says that, apart from the I don't want to look silly brigade. I don't care what you look like, and neither should you. It's about your dog's reinforcement, not what Sally said about what I looked like yesterday because I was around with a dog. There's a matter of times I've been on the floor playing tuggy with my Gemma Shepherd so they can win and have, you know, it doesn't matter. The only person that's judging you is you. Everybody else's opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is how your dog is at that time. Sorry guys, I know my pace is a bit fast. Food drive. So within Man Training Global, we often use pots of food with um, a wet food in for dogs. It's our primary reinforcer 90% of the time with man trailing dogs. I personally have quite a preference for toys because I find toys look better. And I did a lot of my training when I first worked with security dogs, drug dogs, was all toys. We didn't use any food um, before the science kind of come forwards and we kind of um, changed. It's toys. So I have a real preference for toys. And I know that I have breeds that generally play with toys because that's my preference. My hound is a bit different, so I'm learning a lot with him. <laughs> Um, but food is generally something wet in a pot, um, it's a pocket size so they can have a good lick. 
the reason that we've always asked in the sports for that pot of licks is not just grabbing food out is so that the dog could enjoy it and savor it. it's a little long and they get there and go oh it's think about having a really good ice cream like it's sunny you have a really nice ice cream looking at ice cream and you feel like oh that's the best ice cream you ever had we want the dogs to feel that for these pots full of food so they lick it out licking releases endorphins in dogs that really fun hormone in the brain that makes them feel amazing um so we want a pot of food that is linked to that again this is individual uh, i will bang on about that all night when food is presented to that dog, you've got to think about how it's presented. If you don't feed your dogs that plastic pots at home, they're probably going to look a little bit weird man trailing. Now, most dogs will get over it, but a few dogs go, why is it in a plastic pot? Or why is it presented this way? Or why is a stranger giving it to me? Then practice these things outside man trailing. You're going to potentially have trouble when you're doing man trailing. So if your dog's a bit nervous of pots, practice feeding them at home from pots. Um, food, actual value versus your value of food. Um, my dogs will eat pretty much anything. They're gannets, it's where they are, always have been. I think it's a pack of dogs problem that they scared the other one's gonna eat it. Um, my spring will also inhale a pot if you have a chance. So they have no food preference really. They work for high value food, they work for low value food. They're just interested in being food. I work with dogs that have lots of preference for food. Um, and a dog I'll talk about Lady in a minute, um, who's a low drive dog. The owners have done amazing motivation. She's kind of like, the inspiration for this um she has to have a smorgasbord she must have sardines dogs and pate and she must have a smorgasbord to fry because she wants to get there and she wants to eat the things she wants um if she gets there and there's an offer of, of those things she probably won't eat it um or she might lick it a little bit and go oh. but if you give her the choice she'll pick what she wants out of those three things you don't end up wasting it because the next trail she might eat the first trail she might eat hot dogs and you might do another trail put a few more hot dogs in and she's like oh no just time about the sardines and she wants she wants to have a choice at the end of her food that's not a problem that's we're taking a bit of time for the owners to work that one out but it's not a problem by any means it's it's that dog having a choice at the end it's like if they if they're going to kill a deer would they eat the meat would they eat the skin would they eat the organs first what does that dog and then within the organs what do they have the dog has a choice when it gets to its prey so why wouldn't it have a choice when it gets to its pudding for finding stuff just going to check who has come on because I have to remove you guys. Um, super. Someone's arrived. Um, super duper. So there's, I was trying to thought now because <laughs> I can hear someone snuffling. Um, yeah, so there's a mortgage board of things for her to try. And she's, you know, really happy about that. She wants to have this choice. If you don't give her that choice, her motivation drops. That's a personal thing. And it's something if you have a dog that you're not sure what it likes as a reward, put several rewards in the pot. Offer different pots, different things. Put cream cheese and corned beef and marmite or whatever. Put something disgusting in them. It's not about what you want. If your dog wants sardines, you suck it up and you put sardines in there. I have one dog that only trails a boiled egg. If there is not boiled egg there, she will not trail. She's not going to trail. End of. She's got there before. She's gone, found the misper. I'll trail there rather found them, no food been off for something else, dog's gone, you must be joking. And she hasn't set off in the trails. She's like, I know you have no egg with you now, so I'm not interested. <laughs> That's her choice. Um, and it's part of the party. So if you've got a dog that's quite foodie and quite excited and you want to motivate it more, um, using bigger bits of like the pate or like chunks of cheese and flicking them about and creating movement, because again, you're tapping into that hunt, prey, kill, it's hunt, devour, hunt, devour, hunt, devour. I find my cheese, I eat my cheese. I find my cheese, I eat my cheese. And it's fun for the dog. They get there, not only do they just get fed, they get to work for it and have fun. So many dogs will choose to work for a reward rather than to be given a reward. You think about that, what they're intrinsically bred to do. They're bred to work, 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 find things. Work, 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 find things or work, work, work and come back to the owner. Whatever they're bred to do, there's, you know, there's so many different breeds with so many different breed traits of what they're bred to do. You know, that is a pointer. He is bred to um, work with his owner and when their bird goes down or when the bird goes up rather, sorry, bird goes up, different ground beef, um, to point on it. So quite often they'll miss, but they'll freeze and they'll sit there for beautiful location pointers. Um, but he might also choose to freeze a little bit further away from a, a misper than they would normally would. He might stop 10 meters away rather than right in front of them because his breed goes point. He doesn't do that, but he could potentially do that based on movement. The movement thing might be tough for him because he finds it 
movement isn't something that he intrinsically does does use movement isn't something he finds intrinsically fun because he's bred to stop on movement he's bred to stop on and say there's something there um so tuggy things might be him but food will be so it's thinking about that breed and motivating that individual within that breed and that party at the end is about not just oh here's a pot of food it's about how can i present this food in a way that the dog finds motivating is it by offering different kinds of food is it by making it more licky is it by putting it in something to get out lotus ball things um or clamshells from tug enough um they're really good because the dogs can destroy them and like pull them apart or what i definitely had one person um i'm sure it was down when i was down in devon who had um the dog was a little bit nervous and wanted the reward wanted to work for the reward if you gave it to her she was quite concerned about misper so what the owner done was fantastic toilet rolls and either end sealed up with the food in the middle and the dog took it apart and ate the biscuit and took it apart and ate the, oh, it was higher value than the biscuit took it apart that dog's motivation for doing man trailing was yes yes person whatever not interested I'm interested in then having a little moment where I get to take the stuff apart I get to rip this apart and eat the thing in it I get to hunt the prey kill and devour it it's a toilet tube with cheese in the middle but the dog loved it and the, the trail lay the miss the person hiding was not what the dog was interested the dog was interested in working to get to this thing it took the owner a while another good one i've seen is bubbles the dog chasing bubbles because they get to snap and do things i've seen that in spaniel and i've seen it in a sheep in you another fantastic sorry we've gone back to play here but another one is a toy choice was um want to play with leaves the dog like to place leaves um again hunt prey kill leaves and another one we had when i was in texas was the dog liked tuggy plastic bags on a string i know it's not everybody's like oh my god it's ripping plastic bags plastic bags are really thick and it was ripping them up and it loved that shredding um so you give it a t-shirt on a rat on a on a line or a plastic bag on a line and it would just rip it up because it wanted to do the kill bit but we're not do want to kill anything, did we? <laughs> and it wouldn't have never touched a trail layer. It just wanted that because that's what that was a working line little terrier and I'd done a lot of barn hunt, a lot of those things, and it was manic for destroying something. <laughs> so we let it destroy something, destroy a bit of rag on a on a tug. It loved it. Um, so it was really cool for that dog to have that. It was really cool. I'm just gonna check there's nothing in the chat, guys. Um Dawn's but don't love the marmalade. Chair's great for that. Um, yeah, try everything. You can try anything and nothing. Um, there's loads of different things food-wise that you can go down, and again on toys. But again, you have to look at a dog an individual. What does your dog like to do? If you have a dog that's desperate to rip stuff up, can you offer it something to do that? What is the motivation man trailing? The action is finding the person, sniff, 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 find the person. The motivation for doing that is the opportunity to sniff and then whatever the reward is. And that variation and that how much how much um not reinforcement um uh words left my head <laughs> i can see it in my brain i can't say it uh, so bear with me guys um how much they prioritize one thing over prioritize that's the word as well prioritize something over another is based on again breed and individual and then previous reinforcement outside of training so when we come down to motivation we talk also about reinforcement outside of um man trailing and some of that is um what's environmentally out there that you can't compete with and one of those is pre-male female so we talk about troubleshooting you've got a dog that's trailing you've got reward it likes but it's still kind of not super keen on a trail or struggling to um maintain you know working on the trail because it's checking stuff out you've got a dog that values p and the environment over what you're doing how can you solve that motivation issue how can you increase the motivation you need to look at the reward and you need to look at the type of trails you're setting have you gone too hard too fast too quickly um are you working in too distracting an environment is this dog just not ready to work around p can you dog recall your dog from p outside man trailing on a walk you know can you call it away by choice not drag it away call it away if you can't do it on a lead you know and then call them off a pee on a walk you're not going to do it man trailing in the 10 meters are you or 33 foot 33 foot you need to work on some things outside of man trailing 
Um, and the biggest troubleshooting is identify the correct motivation. What actually motivates your dog? Um, I know this is what this webinar is about, <laughs> but and it's a whistle stop tour of motivation. Um, but honestly, just turn and look at your dog. You know, what does my dog like doing? If your dog likes peeing on stuff, then don't pee out on the back on the trail, but on the way back, they can pee. Um, so we talked about secondary reinforcement. If the dog goes out there, gets its food, and on the way back, you give it, you take all its harness off, it's found a person, you take all the gear off, it's walking back. Let it pee on everything. You probably won't let it pee on the outside of the trail, but you're going to let it pee on the way back. Let it sniff every blade of grass. What's enjoyable for that dog is the action of checking the environment. And they learn that if I do this thing and find someone in the bush, makes mum happy, I get food or I get a tuggy toy, then I get to sniff. That's my secondary reinforcement. My primary reinforcement is the reward at the end, which coupled with, oh, I get to pee on stuff. This is amazing. I love it. That's something that's really important to some dogs. Um, but more too often, the owner's chatting away to instruct them on the way back and not letting the dog be a dog. Um, so I want to talk about this German Shepherd on this photo. So, and she's the one on the main event photo as well. Her name's Lady. Um, she's one of my, actually, my ex-rescue dogs. And a uh, fantastic couple have her who have done nothing but be short of amazing with this dog. Um, and she is a super duper low drive German Shepherd. <laughs> like they have done so much work with her to the point where they've done more than anyone I've ever seen to motivate a dog. Um, most people have gone, she doesn't want to do it, forget about it. But they've gone, no, 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 she can do it and she wants to do it. It's just got to be in a certain sex of circumstances. Um, and I was chatting to them before the webinar. I don't know if they're on or not. Um, if you are on, Natalie, uh, <laughs> tell me uh, <laughs> and go from there. Um, um, I just can't answer these questions actually before I go any further than that. So, um, Mine also likes driven at crinkly cat toys. Imagine she thinks she's crunching up small animal bones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's going through the mind? A murder. I always think, um, you know, what's going through the head. And when they're dreaming, just because we think they're chasing something in a dream when they're doing like that running and squeaking, they could be being chased by a velociraptor. You don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, so Ashley's put, um, a dog in my session child beautifully found a misfit quick and was not interested in any type of food, toys, fuss, reward. He just wanted to keep sniffing. He was a mixed breed street rescue. Sniffing seems to be his reward. Super. So actually, before I talk about Lady, I'm going to talk about this. Street dogs are very different to your average Joe dog, um, depending on where they are in the world. Um, where they've come off, they come from the streets in the UK. They they you tend to breed traits. If they've come from Spain or Cyprus or Greece or anything like that or China and um, they're very different so their motivations in life are pure survival often now I could be generalizing a whole population of dogs but the ones that are that very much very mixed that you not you look at it and go mm, it could be this it could be that it could be a mix of this and you do a DNA test and it comes up with 15 breeds that proper like not far off a dingo kind of dog so a European street dog yeah so um slightly shaggy small brown type thing <laughs> um, I should have that's what I'm imagining in my head but I know that's that's generalizing a lot of breeds there you don't always know what they are if you do it's not what you expect to be those dogs don't think like English bred dogs they spent enough time enough generations now to be more set in survival mode um rather than oh I'm working for a motivation for working with my hand if you get what I mean so what I have found with those and this, again this is my personal opinion on man trailing this is not um gospel because we're still writing the books on man trailing we're still doing the research on man trailing is that those dogs don't tend to want a reward at the end what they want is to get to some sort of safety um or they want to get to um complete an action so they go sniff 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 find a person brilliant found you they look at you like you're an idiot and go yeah what and you're like, oh, it doesn't cheese. And they go, no, you're a stranger. I don't want anything off you. It could be poison. No, thank you. Um, and the owner might get involved. And dog goes, no, no, I just found a weirdo in a bush. I'm actually not interested in something. Oh, I'm slightly stressed. I really enjoyed the sniffing. I liked doing it. But I'm not interested in this reward. Actually, I'm going to continue sniffing. Um, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. What you do find over time is that you need to find something that the owner can reward that dog with generally. Um, now, whether it's just a fuss or a verbal good dog, even if they spend at home reinforcing like a word that means they don't get reward. So if they go, yes, which is obviously a lot of people use as a, like a marker word that has a reinforcement to you got to get fed. What they can do is at home is just do something like good boy, good boy, good boy. And every time they say good boy, 
in the nice high pitch thing, they get fed at home. The dog starts to um, understand that that good boy is going to get them fed. So when they're doing man trailing and they find somebody and they go, oh my goodness, the person's a bush, it's a little bit weird, a little bit stressed to eat, like doing it, but this is a bit odd at the end. Because they've still got that hunt survivalness, they just don't know how to pair it with the mundane idiot in the bush, if you get what I mean. It's, it's like, yeah, yeah, I can hunt, I can survive. Why is there an idiot in the bush? Whereas an English girl goes, hunt, survive, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, person! Because we spent so long socialising and breeding to do it. So European dogs will have that. What we can do is build an association in the brain. So if they get there, they go, oh, weird in a bush. And the owner goes, Kabee! in that really excited tone they normally do, or they shout pineapple, whatever. Um, their brain will light up in the same way and they'll release those chemicals. They may still not take a reward off the person. They may not interact with them, but we can start to change the brain and how it feels about these situations um, and how it prioritizes it or doesn't prioritize it but i will say my sort of experience is the street dogs once they get into it are very good at it like properly good at it because they're so efficient with their nose um but what you will find is it takes a lot of time to get there they have to understand that this game isn't going to end at some point in a negative it always ends a positive and that can take upwards of 30 or 40 repetitions for those of like trails for those dogs to understand it what i've often done with those kind of dogs is gone home to the owner and said practice loads and loads of hunting trails which are short sharp sweet trails where dog gets there gets a fuss go on get the fuss go on get the fuss go on and practice that at home away from session so when it comes to session the dog's got more of an excitement for it we talked before about intensity trails and how um those trails added onto the main trail that we use with the man training global that is a direct take from some of the copper stuff but we've, we've adapted it slightly different um those intensity trails mean that the dog always gets a quick reward those trails are about 10 50 meters long um and the person goes out of sight dog has to use its nose but nose is going to get a quick reward that is the key in how we do managing the sports to keep the dogs really really motivated um, and really really happy on what they're doing um so it's important that we do loads and loads of quick fast fire rewards even if to us that dog is not looking like it's been rewarded if the dog is still following the scent and finding the person there is enough reward in that scent enough motivation to do that behavior from it if that makes sense again I do apologize i'm a little bit waffly it's the way my brain works um natalie is on this who owns lady so apologies natalie if i butcher any of this <laughs> that you're doing with lady so again, so ladies know motivation. Um, she's very distracted by environment. She's very distracted by pee if, if she's in the environment like that. Um, and Natalie has worked really, really hard with Lady over the past two years, two and a bit years, you've had her. Yeah, so she's the same age as mine, but yes, it's two years. Um, so they do lots and lots of intensity. They do lots and lots of excitement with her. They don't just go, oh, you know, we've got to this level and then stay at a level. They do lots of dipping up and down levels, lots of pushing her and then being really reinforcement on the foundations and really reinforcement on all the time, working out what lady's motivation is. Is it this choice of food? Right, okay, let's try this. Yeah, she likes this as well. Brilliant. Is it going to be this toy this week? Yeah, they're okay with that toy. They're doing lots of choices and lots of getting her to work for them. They have danced around centers to get lady to play with them they have played the silly fool and got her attention she loves it so she will get a buffet reward of pate sardines and hot dogs and she'll get to choose those things and then she'll get a tuggy game with them with the trail layer as well but one of the big things for her is choosing the right trail layer so when we talk about motivation as well we talk about the reward if the person that has the reward isn't correct then there's a problem um if the dog doesn't want to go and find a man because they're scared of men then that's going to be a low motivation problem but if they love women um hiding a woman out for that dog to make a difference or hiding a family member or you know you can you can increase motivation by the person it's the it doesn't have to be so that we talk about bond you know does that dog have a bond that the dog has an association with that person they're potentially more likely to find them it isn't always i've done it before where the owner's hidden and I've had the dog trail. The dog went, well, they've left. Uh, what do you want to do about it? And I went, you need to find them. The dog went, mm, not that fast. Um, that was a little bit of a problem. We sorted it out, but it was a little problem. <laughs> I've also had my dog do that to me because um, he was more interested in other stuff. 
and we had to work a lot on his um focus on me but he was a rescue so we had a bit of work to do with that one um she also makes sure that she picks the venues where ladies are going to succeed so we talk about environment she doesn't pick places that are super peaceful and she doesn't start from places that are super contaminated like car parks again remember what we're doing man training is for a sport um and we want that sport to be enjoyable it doesn't mean stronger harder faster longer it means my dog actually want to be here do i want to be here it's pissing down the rain and we're having fun it's not oh my goodness i'm not trail and it was crap it's got to be that feeling that you also have as well. Um, they do a pre-check. They have lots of sniffing and lots of stuff going on. Um, and she checks stuff in the area. She gives the lady time to get her sniffs out and get her bees out before starting the trail. If she doesn't do that, the lady's going to do it at the start anyway, whether she likes it or not. <laughs> um, and it's a pain and it becomes it comes frustrating. It's not a pain. It's frustrating for us because we don't think the dog is prioritizing the trail. The dog isn't prioritizing the trail at that point. The dog is going, I'm going to do these things and then I'll do the thing that you want me to do. Okay, fine, love. Um, Fiona's talking. So Doug is a street dog. Uh, Fiona, I can't remember where he's from. Um, Doug will take food now, but he's really considers his trail, never deviates for animal scent, but work way to scent spreads and um, will work it as well, taking him up to high and sniffs before refinding it. So he's a Romanian street dog, man this chair, also hates fog and unknown urban. So he does lots of methodical thinking. He likes working the scent out. He's got to work to the edge of those scent pools and then gets the person. So one might say he's faffing about, he's he's doing those displacement behaviours. He isn't. He's working it out in a way that he finds fun and also in a way that works for his motivation. Um, so it's, a, you know, it's, it's him as an individual. His priority on life is different to his spaniel brother, who is very food motivated um, and fun. And his brother likes doing all sorts of fun. Um, and he's a spaniel, so he's full of it. <laughs> um, Claire's put my springer would do that if it had to find me. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing when a dog goes, oh, bye, love. Um, that's when you know you've got to work on something. But if you've got a springer, and I should imagine your springer goes, yeah, yeah, you've gone, but there's a bird three trees over, I've just noticed. And I'm going to just check that bird. I'll be there in a minute. Um, and I'll be there in a minute and sort you out. But I just got to get this bird first if it's a spaniel. If it's if it's anything like my springer, yes, it'll, I'll be there now in a minute. It is the epitome of that saying. I'll be there now in a minute, which means any time in the next three hours. Uh, dogs. Um, oh, sorry, guys, sneaking off there. Um, right, troubleshooting. Overly complex trails are the bane of your my life and it will knock a dog's motivation on its ass immediately if you are working with an instructor trailing or if you work with multiple instructors for the love of god throw in some easy trails now and then whether you're doing i don't care what your goal is at that point actually i'm not bothered about what your goal is if you've done a few trails where you've been working on pushing them or whatever you need to throw in an easy trail that dog just goes oh that was fantastic and um, that was so much fun i love this it's like going to work. If every day is hard at work and you're really earning your money, you start to question whether it's worth it. If you have a couple of days where you're like, oh my God, this was super easy, I had a great week, and then you have a harder week, the great week makes you still like your job, um, even though you've had a hard week. It doesn't have to be constantly hard. And what can be really forgotten with their man trailing is not reinforcing those foundations. It's not a step backwards. People hear the word, I'm going to go back to an intensity star, a delayed star from, oh, my dog's got so far, blah, blah, blah. No, you. it's not a step backwards. It never is. It's a reinforcement of the foundations. It's offering the dog something fun to do in order to give them the opportunity um, to do something that's easy for them to get that motivation nice and excited and to reinforce that motivation i can do this this is fun this has super hard work that's fine again if you go back to hunting um if the dog had an opportunity to hunt a squirrel and a rabbit and the squirrel constantly got into the tree they couldn't get it but they managed to catch a few rabbits they're going to stop chasing the squirrel um for survival they're going to chase the rabbits because there's a higher rate of catching it and i understand most pet dogs will still chase the bloody squirrel but if you talk, think about what the reinforcements are, it's like that. Whereas, um, sorry, that's generally what the reinforcement is. When you look at them, it's the same man trailing. If it's always too hard, they're going to pick something easier to do, which is mess about. So think about reinforcing those foundations. 
um, all the time. Um, Natalie's just reinforced what I said about Lady before. She likes um, um, throwing cheese and chicken and roast lamb dinner leftover in the pots. And she wants to play tuggy today. Sometimes she'd rather sniff. Eats. She's very much, she's a good learning dog. She's very much, a, I'm going to do this, guys. I know I want to do. Um, Nick's put, um, going back to basic cat, Hula was a good send. It was a godsend. Yeah. If you hadn't got back to foundations, you probably would have got to a point where he didn't enjoy it and never did you. So foundations are important. And foundations build motivation. Like, it's it's important. Um, Dawn's another Manchester Global Instructor. Foundation work and dogs become more motivated. They do. If you're going to offer me 10 tasks to do and all the time they're hard, I'm going to start struggling to do them or I'm going to stop doing them. If you offer me one hard task but nine easy tasks, I'm going to do all the tasks. I'll probably do them with gusto. Pay me in cake will be fine. <laughs> um, and combination. You need to do a different combination of things. It can't be the same thing all the time. It's boring. Yes, the dog will find that reinforcing to the most degree and find a certain thing. You know, they want to get something in a food pop. It doesn't have to be the same thing every time. Um, they want to play with a toy, but it doesn't have to be the same way every time because the same trailer is never the same. Right, guys, we're coming to the end now um, because I've waffled for an hour, almost an hour straight I've waffled. So you have done well keeping with me on this one, um, which is amazing. Um, um, so I've done some known trails recently and they've been brilliant, which would mean I've not been distracting my dog. Yeah, so when we talk about foundations, that might be doing different starts, but it also doing what we know is what within we man trailing global, we call blue line trailing, where we know where the trail is and, the, and so does the handler. A single blind is where the instructor and the trail layer knows the trail is, and a double blind is where just the trail layer knows the trail is. These blue line on known trails are brilliant because you get the opportunity to look at your dog and look at its behavior and know what it's doing rather than going, I think it's on the trail or I'm interpreting its behavior as on the trail. Whereas with the known and single, and sorry, blue line trails, you can go, yeah, the person walked here, the wind's blown that way. So the reason that dog's working two meters off where the footsteps are is because that's where blown scent is um, because of the environment and because of the age of the trail. You can start to interpret things. And it's really important that you reinforce those foundations as you go. Um, when you're working with an instructor or if you're working on your own, depending on what your goal is in life with your dog, have fun. Is it to do your levels? Is it to do progression badges? Is it if you are going to go operational, which is not something I teach, um, then you've got to look at, have I put enough foundations in? Pyramids are wide based for a reason. It's because it's the strongest way to have it. If you do a minimum amount of foundations and try and get to the top, you're going to fall down very quickly. Right, questions guys. Um, I have waffled at you for a hour straight. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a picture of me and that's me in America hiding in a tunnel for a pointer puppy. It's the only picture of me I like. So um, that's the one you've got to see. Um, those, if anyone's interested, are my socials are can trailing canines, um, and then my website is trailingcanines.com. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Oh my goodness. Um, so we've got Catherine Hunter's ass. As, for different, as far as different breeds and how they work, my border collie tends to go back and forth slightly trails, almost like getting many negatives the whole time. Whereas bloodhounds and hounds have seen much more straight on the whole trail. Have you seen differences in breeds like that too? And why would it be? Is a way somehow use that at my advantage and keep her on the trail and reduce risk of a crittering, lose motivation, stay on the trail? Sorry for a long question. No, don't be sorry for long questions. Long questions are good. So we call that, and obviously you're in Texas, is... Um, we no, we admit, um, call it a flowing negative. So where that dog goes like this all the time and weaving and looking like it's been a trail, if you've got a span, you might call it quartering. Um, what it is, is it isn't anything like that. It isn't quartering. It's the dog is um, going, hmm, um, the dog is going to the edges of scent and going, oh, scent, 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 scent. Oh, I've lost it. Right, working back, working back onto the trail. Uh, I've lost the trail, lost the trail. Right, get back again. And it's called... Um, a flowing negative it's all the time telling you where the trail is and where the trail isn't it's a really important behavior love it keep it reinforce it um the dog is making micro decisions as it works those micro decisions impact how it interprets the trail um you'll find collies do it you'll find spaniels do it you'll find staffies do it um and other breeds apart from true scent breeds like hounds 
do tend to keep nose down. And it's because hounds and anything with long ass ears like dachshunds or beagles, their ears funnel the scent in. This is a really crap description. I need a pair of earrings. Is the ears <laughs> funnel the scent in, and so it helps basically like a big old suction, like a hoover, funnels the scent in towards their face. So they're picking up scent and going, yep, there's scent here. So keep working, keep working, keep working. There's scent to keep working. So they just work on the fact there's loads of scent hitting their nose, keep following where all that bulk is. They don't tend to go like this. They tend to go, yep, 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 scent, 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 brilliant. Blah, 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 that's fantastic. Whereas other breeds who haven't got that funneling action um, go, need to catch the scent, hit the some hip. Nope, it's on this way. Nope, yep, it's here. Yep, do, 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 do. So what they're doing is going, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, as they're working. That's my interpretation. <laughs> that's the best way I can explain it. Again, like this is all my interpretation on man trailing generally the science has just has not caught up with what we're doing like it is miles behind um what we think is going on and when it does come out and prove what we thought is going right fantastic but we're just trying to work that one out um but yeah don't what she's doing sounds like it's perfect if you're unsure um i'll put my email back in a minute drop me an email a video of it and then we can have a little section of it um and see what she's doing um and potentially say yes or no on that one um <laughs> She was supposedly herding sheep in her mind. Be surprised if that's what she was thinking. Um, but if she was, fair game. Um, <laughs> depends how obsessed with sheep your cat, your collie is. Yeah, we call it a flowing negative, um, which again is based off, I think it's off Kevin Cocker stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's a dog going, no trail, yes, there's trail, yes, no trail. And they're giving us those negatives on what they're doing. Uh, right, guys, any more questions? Yeah, Coco explains the phone negatives. And um, there's loads of information out there now. There's loads of different um, things coming out, and loads of people writing different methods and things like Man Trailing Global uses the method, Cocky's method, GA canine. But whatever method you use, it comes down to what is motivating your dog to work? What's motivating it to want to get to the end of the trail? Um, you know um is it, it you know is it the action of sniffing is it what the person has is it the opportunity for a game with you is that primary or secondary reinforcer you know fun um how do your tendencies in the trail differ today as cocker um they don't they're very similar um we might do it like shorter than cocker we don't always tend the dogs we tend to but we don't always do we do it in a way that gives a dog fun um with our tensities it's again it's about that reinforcement it's a secondary reinforcer um the dog goes oh my goodness that's a person get my reward carry on um any questions guys about motivation man trailing life i can't answer all those but i can answer man trailing questions um have you got anything you'd like to say was yeah that was horseshit catherine um or anything that resonated with you you can unmute yourself and ask a question if you want to. You're more than welcome to type a question. Be my guest. You've got me here. So ask the question. Um, if you don't want to, that's fine. What's the most common mistake to lose your dog's motivation? So the two that are the most common that I find is you don't know what your dog wants um, and you can't play with it properly. So you, you don't understand what that dog wants at the end. So you think it wants tuggy games, but it's not actually interested in a tug. Or you're like, oh, it plays fine at home, but you haven't brought enough. It plays fine at home because it's bored. Um, whereas man trying to get other stuff to do. So you you don't understand what the dog wants, and you've got you've gone too complex too quickly. The dog has found the trail too challenging, um, and you haven't reinforced those foundation. You haven't done enough short, fun, exciting man trailing for that dog to want to carry on. Um, and both of those are really common and are also really easy to sort out with the like playing on all the right food is go home and look at it and go, yeah, actually my dog eats it here, but it doesn't eat it on a walk. If it won't eat it on a bog standard walk, it's not going to eat it man trailing. Um, and the same with foundations, go back to basics, do lots of fun trails in different environments. If your dog can trail great in rural, brilliant. When you go to urban and you go and trail some cities or towns, reinforce those foundations don't start a scent article in a town if you've never tried on a town so excuse me um start doing lots of fun intensity lots of wind up lots of excitement Just put, find um someone that dog knows um is a good one as well 
super guys any more let's answer your question <laughs> danny or denny sorry denny so apologies i couldn't see that my glasses are a bit foggy um nothing tops motivation uh birds for motivation my back with talia she's starting to enjoy the game and to work around birds but if a pigeon takes off she loses interest in nothing compete any ideas what reward are you using and is it feathered have you got some little feathered stuff um Tell me what you're using her as reward, Catherine. Also, much love for the Braco. Um, I have one that used to occasionally chair with me, but I now moved area, so she doesn't. She was awesome. Um, proper would love one of those as a breed, but wanted a slightly smaller breed next. But let me know what her reward is. She's very foodie until there's a bird. Okay, so if you um i what i would be working against foundations and reinforcing those foundations and working around birds so if you can work someone hides for her um that she knows or even you hide for her around birds um but you've got to do super short trails i'm talking like 30 meters um and lots and lots of oh my goodness i'm going super excited out of sight out of sight out of sight all the time um to get her focus back on nose down equals reward um if it's the movement um and it's it's the like going up then have a look at trying to use um a toy on a rope or a toy that you can flick about so she gets that kind of quick movement um like a cat toy basically um that could potentially help in that situation does she, one thing as well, if she has the opportunity to chase birds on walks, then that's going to reinforce it as well. So if you can start building on her recall around birds, that will help if she has or hasn't got a recall. That's just something to reinforce those things. It is hard um, when they've got a bird thing because the birds are always not what you think they're going to be. And they're always, pigeons are stupid. They just stand there and go, I'm a pigeon, eat me. Um, stupid buggers. So looking at it's potentially incorporating a bit of a tucky toy not uh, like a flicky toy like a cat toy um so they can bounce around and chase it might help but i know that brackers aren't always super toy motivated because they're a retrieving breed and a pointy breed rather than like a tucky tucky breed um uh kirsty watts oh flora um the walk back lots of admiration attention is part of our party for the diva yeah um so kirsty has got a uh, newfoundland who is a brilliant man trailer but a lot of it's on that dog's terms because mantra, uh, sorry, Newfoundlands aren't hand trailing dogs per se. Their life is not based on the scent they're in the sea. Their life is based on visual and nothing is done at speed. They are most graceful in the water, not so much on land, a bit like seals. Um, but Flora's a really good man trailer and a lot of her reward comes from Kirsty because she just really wants to please Kirsty. And she also wants to find people. She just loves people because they get bred to do. They're bred to go around people and love them um so she's a fabulous dog trail she's so sweet she always gets there and goes and yeah you're the bush give me my food um and part of her uh, walk back is attention it's it she wants everyone to tell her she's awesome um iphone <laughs> my dog plays all games tuggy for outside at home outside on the end of the trail only food she's a beast for cat food i realized that being a collie she plays with me not others so won't play it in the trail plus nerfing it took a while to read this um yeah, um, some dogs just want the food and they want the like, I call them McDonald's for dogs, the cat food, the pedigree chum, the stuff that you most people go, well, oh, God, Jesus, not feeding that. Um, the the real jelly stuff, they love it. And so that means your dog's probably very much in like hunt, prey, devour. It's in that devour stage of that hunt cycle where they're like, yes, oh my good. Um, it's it's good fun and they want to eat it and they want to enjoy it and that's fine that is absolutely fine it's so individual how these dogs um get reward it doesn't matter so one of my ex-security dogs we've trailed with him um and normally he's all about like eat people have fun we did some training with him he doesn't get food often as a food as a reward we use a lot of toys with him we didn't use his toy during man training because i didn't want him going oh look toy oh we can do play sports um so um we can do bite sports so we started food man trailing now he won't take a treat at home he's not fussed about it he just 
he would have seen the dogs were bad, but he's like, oh, thanks. It doesn't motivate him. But man training it does because it's that hunt prey devour. He's like, oh my goodness, we just take the bite bit out of it <laughs> and we do the food bit. And he loves it. We don't use a toy with him, even though he's got super high drive for a toy. We don't use it because he likes food for man training because it's different from his other sports. Um, so it's good. Uh, Storm's cat food. <laughs> it's good. So, um, da -da -da -da. Um, my box probably loves cuddles for everyone more than the food. Yeah. Boxers, um, old time bulldogs, that kind of ilk. Staffy is another one. Bully breeds generally, not necessarily molosses, but kind of the bull breeds. And I know boxers were generally like a herding breed, but they get often get classified as bull breeds. Um, so much human centric that all they want is a bit of love. And I love it. And they come in, they go, I found you. Can you fuss me and smush my face? And everybody has to tell them they're awesome and they're really good. Um, and the trail layer is a big enough, as big a motivator as anybody else. So um, that's fine. Absolutely fine. A phase on Mabel loves the first more than food. Yes, she does. She loves it. Um, and that's fine. Some dogs want the interaction. Amazing. Definitely, definitely worth um, investing in. Um, I was right note. Um, that fussy stuff with the right trail layer or as, as a handler, it's absolutely fine. Um, can we talk on our trail? Someone's asked. Ooh. Um, and my dog seems to like me to talk and support him. That'd be too much. Talking the trail would be very dependent on um, your dog. So some dogs need you to go, yes, you're doing awesome. Well done. If you've got a slightly nervous dog and they're working something out and you're going, oh, good dog, well done. As long as you know where that trail is, don't do it on single blinds, double blinds. You've got to do it on blue line on known trail. So when the dog is on where you think the scent is and following scent, you can go, oh, good dog, well done. You, you worked that out, fantastic. That can help. Just don't over talk and go, because it means nothing. It becomes background noise for those dogs. So you want to be working on the little bits and bobs. Oh, well done. Good choice. Well done. Um, and and work on it it can make a big difference but yeah have a little bit of play with it just try not to get too over talky i tend to say to people not to talk because i find that they start gnattering behind the dog all the time and the dog gets really peeved off with it um so it's annoying for the dog um catherine you put um crazy bracket with no recall on birds and never off lead except in clothes extremely long and focused when trailing but bird flaps and she will totally focus she's starting to switch back more rapidly need a pigeon in my pocket Look, if you want to get one of those like stuffed bird toys um, that gamekeepers use, um, for gun dog people use, that might be the thing that she gets her pigeon at the end <laughs> to, um, to carry back. She can carry back her prey. That might be the thing for her. Um, you can also get like rabbit fur balls and things. It depends on how far you want to go. I, I love the rabbit fluff tuggy, but it, it doesn't irk me to have rabbit fluff. Some people are not keen on it. And the same with feathers it doesn't bother me. Some people are not feathers fans. So um you can if you look at gamekeeping sites you can get dummies that have feathers on and it might be that's her thing <laughs> um it's it's really really good um and you've also asked is how important whether the record com reward comes from the trail layer or the handler um if depending on the dog it can come from either so um the reason we get the trail layer towards is because we want the dog to have a relationship with them and want to find them and what happens if the handler, some dogs, not all dogs, the handler always rewards. The dog gets so far down the trail and goes, well, you've got the cheese in your pocket, love. So why am I going to find Bob of the Bush when you could just give me the cheese? And what we found more early on than with more experienced trailing dogs is that the dog goes, you've got it. As you get more experience, so like I carry Captain's toy often now um, because I don't want him to, um, because I want to throw it in over the top of him sometimes. Um, and um i have a tuggy with him at the end so he gets his food and then we have a tuggy so he knows i've got the reward on me but he wants to work with the food and then get the tuggy we've worked a lot on you must get to them before you get the reward you don't get it early so yes it can come from the handler but just be careful how it comes from the handler and where you are in your journey if possible keep it with the trail the raw with the trailer for a long period of time even if the trail air, you know dog doesn't want to go to take food off them even if they have the food pots and just throw them to you or put them on the ground and you pick them up it, the dog needs to understand the reward it's worth getting to the end of the trail to get the reward if that makes sense um, da -da 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 -da. um catherine asked catherine keatley i'll see you in eden in february um catherine got 
three Catherines on, which is awesome, because um, you never see my name that often. Um, you can try having someone video your trails and observe what's going on. Much better decide what they need if it's too much. I learned so much that way, moment. Really good one, actually. Videoing trails. Um, I should add that to presentation. Video your trails. If you're not videoing your trails, why not? Um, even if it's from behind, you can see what's affecting the dogs. I love videos. I hate them on the internet. They should be for you to go through and not be posted all over the damn internet all the time. Um, but yeah, videos are a fantastic way of um, being able to look back and see what's working. Also, keeping good logs. Um, you cannot look back and go, I don't know if that worked or not, if you don't haven't kept good logs there's a reason we all have log books you need to write fed cat food and um corned beef dog loved corned beef cat food not so much like you need to make those notes so when next time you come to trail you can go ah we're probably not going to try the corned beef or we're not going to try the cat food or whatever you're not going to you're not going to necessarily repeat that for a little while and then you'll try again um it can make a big difference my challenge would be to you guys is to really is to um complete your logs properly and make sure you write down your notes of what your dog found motivating and what it didn't on trails and also you know video it and also think about actually what your dog wants in life in the home what does your dog want what does it crave if it's attention how can it get more attention off people with man trailing if it's food how can you make it work with food so excuse me there's loads of different options um you have to get down you just have the nitty-gritty of your dog really it's getting down to that nitty-gritty all the time um right any more questions guys any more um if you do have any questions that you don't want to ask on this um you're always welcome to email me at um trailing canines at gmail.com um we'll just pop that in the chat for you guys you'd always love me email to that or you can find me at um trailing canines on facebook um those are the best places to get me you can get my website but it just goes to email anyway um yeah you gotta this is obviously being recorded and um, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pop the recording up on my website um and you can go and rewatch it again via youtube there um but it'll also be shared to my facebook at trailing canines so you can go rewatch it again i know it's been a whistle stop tour it's not a i provide you with all the answers with your man trailing um i can't I can help you if I see a dog in person usually. I can offer you loads of different things. Um, but an overarching thing with man trailing is um, you know, um, you can't you can't see everybody. You can't see everything, sorry, from that. Um it's it's hard. It's hard to kind of talk through it. I'd rather see it um and you yourself, you can see it because I can go, you see this, you see that, oh the dog's just a bit this, have you tried doing this and we can work it through. But if you want to send videos to me, be my guest, um I will do my best to answer um anything that I'm seeing in the videos and kind of a snapshot of what's going on. Um super. Any more questions guys? Are you happy to enjoy your Friday evening? Um, I will see you tomorrow, James. Um, so you can have your Velociraptor. Um, yeah, I always think that they're um, they're dreaming. They've been chased by a Velociraptor. That's what my thought is. They're not chasing a bunny. They're being chased by a Velociraptor. Um, lovely to see you, speak to Kirsty. And um, thank you so much, everybody, for coming on. I really, really appreciate you guys spending your time coming on live tonight. Um, it's really brilliant to speak to you, not just myself, um, for an hour and a bit. Um, and hopefully, even if you haven't got a low motivation dog, there might be some ideas that you can use or some thoughts that you might use for other dogs. Um, but have a lovely evening, guys. And hopefully, I will see some of you in 2023. Um, if you want anything, you know where to find me. Super.